Okay, I ran across uh, some old footage of, um, and it's kind of like a little extended coverage um, of Jonathan Robinson's checkered past. Uh, and I call it a checkered past. <clears throat> a lot of times we're the product of our environment. Um, I'm assuming that there wasn't a father around throughout the duration of his childhood. But anyway, uh, at an early age, he actually um, started getting into trouble, I think at around 17, I, I think. But this is gonna go over um, you know, his history with the criminal justice system. And I found that to be kind of interesting, so. See if I can get this to play. That murder committed live on social media. Renee Williams of Shreveport cowering in fear before being shot dead during a Facebook Live video. Police say her ex-boyfriend, Jonathan Robinson, did it. After firing at police who arrived to help Williams, three investigates looked into Jonathan Robinson's background and found a list of violent charges going back 18 years. Jamie Ostroff wanted to know how Robinson was walking free with such a long rap sheet. Fear, the spectacle, the tragedy, playing out for all to see. Three children lost their mother, Renita Williams. She was 27. Police say her killer was this man, Jonathan Robinson, a man whose mugshots could fill a photo album. There was a robbery charge in 2000. Robinson pleaded guilty and was sentenced to three years in prison. He was paroled after two. In 2003, a man is shot in the leg in a drive-by shooting. Charges against Robinson are dismissed. Prosecutors said the case was weak, the witnesses shaky. Eight months later, Robinson was arrested again for shooting a man in the leg. They had had a long-running dispute. He plea bargained to a lesser charge of battery and served seven years. When he got out, Robinson's rap sheet got longer. Drug charges dismissed, lack of evidence. Another robbery charge dismissed. The victim's story didn't add up. And then there was a list of misdemeanor charges over the years. Well, I think the fact that um, the crimes that were violent crimes, that were felony crimes, I think it was sensed appropriately. I mean, he had 10 years of birth, and that's, not, that's a fact. Yeah. Rod Demery is an investigator with the Cato DA's office. He's looking into Robinson's past and how many breaks he's managed to get. I think it's time to chance. I think his victims were selective. And I think the fact that if he would have uh, committed some of the crimes that he committed upon people who were hardworking citizens, especially in the robbery and the, and the uh, other cases, and uh, he absolutely would have suffered proper consequences. The robberies, the shootings, all distractions from the real problem, Demery says. That's because the murder of Renita Williams wasn't the first time Robinson attacked a woman. May 24, 2015, Shreveport. This one involving a longtime girlfriend. According to police, Robinson rammed her car, then followed her home. When witnesses called police to this house, officers saw him inside beating her. They forced their way in. Robinson used his girlfriend as a human shield before officers got her away from him. They tased him to get him under control. Robinson pleaded guilty to domestic abuse battery, a misdemeanor. False imprisonment charges were dropped. His sentence, a year probation. Three months later, Robinson assaulted the woman again. That violated his probation and he went to jail for 60 days. Demery says the sentence could have been worse, but the victim didn't want to cooperate, as is too often the case when it comes to prosecuting domestic violence. Because I just don't think they have the ability to make a, a, a proper decision, especially when they're so emotionally involved, afraid, dependent, or all these things that make the victims in the first place. Demery says the same thing happened with Renita Williams less than one year before she was killed. No, there was a report in August of 2017 um, Ms. Williams reported that uh, Mr. Robinson grabbed her by the throat as she was sitting in a vehicle. She also chose not to press charges, so the case was closed. I asked Demery, had the first girlfriend pressed charges in 2015, would he have still been in prison? 
I, I think, think so, yes. That's why, Devery says, there needs to be more reform in the way domestic violence cases are handled. I don't believe that the victim of a domestic violence incident should have um, very much say in whether this person is prosecuted or not. Clearly, we've learned that people who are actually victimized by their partners and their relationships sometimes have a cloud of judgment when it comes time for that person to be prosecuted. Hey, uh, didn't know them. Unfortunately, the victim in this case no longer has a voice. So how Robinson is prosecuted is entirely up to the DA. I'm pretty confident he'll never sit on the street again. Chief Public Defender Pam Smart says her office is in the very early stages of gathering information on Robinson. While she knows his priors will play a role, but you can't just stop there because um, it, it, you've got to look at the whole set of circumstances on anything or you're not doing your job. You can't, that's why there's a presumption of innocence. I mean, even though I, I know there's the Facebook video and all that, but there's so many other things that I think everybody discounts in the criminal justice system, and you've got to look at all of that. Robinson is jailed under a $2.5 million bond. He's charged with murdering Williams and trying to shoot seven police officers. The murder charge alone carries a mandatory life in prison term without parole. The DA is preparing to present the case to a grand jury as early as next month. Okay, so to elaborate on that a little bit, um, cause I'm, I'm kind of knowledgeable about this particular case and um, the the former girlfriend is the one that he was actually already with uh, Sharika uh, she's the the first woman there that they were talking about uh, that didn't want to press charges um, So, he had a violent streak in him. I don't know what, you know, maybe he never got help, help for that. But um, the woman that he was with currently at the time of the shooting and previously to that, um, the one that Renita went off on on social media, was the, the first girlfriend. That's the one I guess he ultimately chose her. Even though he was still dealing with both of them, you know, she was his main woman and Renita was the side woman. Um, but the main woman apparently had, had been um, in a situation where um, I mean, I think we all saw the hole in that wall. I'm assuming that he that he busted through that wall with his bare fist, I'm assuming. So, um, but she was the one that was hailed as the human shield when the police came. There was previous, um, for lack of a better word, bouts of violence with her. Um, but I guess when it, when it came time to prosecute and, and all these different things, I don't know, maybe if, if, if some time had passed and they made up or, you know, however it went down, um, she chose not to cooperate. Um, and so he ended up getting a year of probation. Um. And that's not anything that is out of the ordinary because those things happen, you know. Um, after people cool down and look back on a situation, you know, they feel differently about it when it comes time for the person that they've made up with 
to potentially serve time. So if not cooperating with that investigation was going to keep him home with her, that's what she was willing to do. Um, and ultimately, you know, he wasn't, obviously he wasn't um, in a committed relationship with her because he was cheating with Renita. And apparently Renita got got a taste of, of what he's capable of doing, you know, when he grabbed her by the throat. And uh, so I'm assuming he had he had um, he had anger, uncontrollable anger issues, and I don't know where those came from, but I'm guessing that in itself, who I think was the real problem. You know, he was unable to control his anger. Uh, apparently she was scared, afraid enough to notify the police. Uh, but then it was the same thing all over again, you know. She didn't want to uh, press charges either, just like the other one did. And those are the incidents that we know about. I'm sure that there were others that flew under the radar that never even get reported. I mean, usually if it gets reported, there's been something that has escalated to that. So there may have been a slap or a push or something, you know, or all types of other things. But it, there's a pattern, you know. You have, have someone who had anger management who has anger management issues, and it seems like the women that he's attracted to, when he acts out on the on, on them, they're afraid um, to press charges, or they don't want to press charges. So there's a pattern of it. Um, if I had to guess, he probably swoon them and they were willing not to press charges so that he wouldn't go to go to jail so that they, he would still be around for them because by one of them not pressing charges he's still available for both of them Now, in his confession, he said he knew her, uh, Renita, about five years. Um, I'm thinking this happened in 2018. So, <clears throat> at the time of the 2015 incident with the first girlfriend that was reported that we know about, uh, Sharika, it's not a stretch to say that he wasn't dealing with the two of them then. Two of them then. Uh, ultimately, what happened is, um, and I, I took a look at, at Renita's Facebook, and there's a lot on there. Uh, there's this very feisty black female um, it's the impression I get, and Apparently, whatever went down over Facebook, she used that platform and those followers to either taunt or humiliate or embarrass um, the woman that he was with to the point that he felt like he had to protect her. Um, maybe as the side chick she never thought he would go that as far as he did. Uh, but he revealed himself that he was going to go there to, to kill her. Um, and then he also said that, you know, because that was him hovering over her and walking in the background. Um, I didn't want to show the actual footage of the of the shooting. 
Uh, but basically, you can see a lot led up to that. You know, the signs were probably there before, even before his first arrest at 17. I think if you go back to his childhood, that's when you're going to find out the root cause of everything that led up to the events. And it was like uh, a chain of events that couldn't be stopped because there was no intervention in that. Uh, apparently, the criminal system wasn't able to identify and offer the help that was needed. And we ultimately know what happened. He got a hundred years, hundred plus years. Uh, he didn't get the death penalty. But it's a disturbing pattern, you know. Um, your emotions, like the guy said, your emotions get in it, you know, the women. They have these love-hate relationships. You know, they love to hate and then they hate to love and they love to love and they hate to hate and, and it goes back and forth, it bounces off of each other. There's usually certain personalities that attract that, that, that friction uh, and it's that same friction that they're drawn to. So, it feeds off each other and then it escalates and then the woman ends up calling the police because he's put his hands on her and then when the time comes they realize they're faced with if I do this he's going to be locked up he, I won't have access to him physically and that's when they don't cooperate when they don't press charges and there's a pattern of that in fact I guess there's the same pattern with both of them and these are the incidents that we know about uh, his criminal history is that, that that you just saw is what we know about um, A lot of people don't know, but for the last three years, he hadn't gotten into any trouble. Um, I think the only trouble is he was in a in a three-way relationship, you know? Um, and it just seems like Renita just ended up becoming more of a threat to his current relationship. Um, and he even stated that, you know, the woman who he was with was suicidal. She gets suicidal. No, not suicidal. Um, she had mental problems, I'm assuming. Or she had, she needed help somehow. Um, I get the impression she was very fragile. Um, he knew what he was doing was hurting her enough. And then, then you have the, the side chick hurting her even more and using social media to hurt her even more. And by using social media to do it, it amplified everything. It wasn't just the three of them, it was everybody else chiming in probably laughing and she used to brunt of it all and, um, and the only solution he saw was what he the events that happened on that day. That's the only solution that he saw to it. That's why he drove. So it's unfortunate that it happened. Um, I just think that there are a lot of elements at play. You know, a lot of what ifs, a lot 
of if only this or if only that, <coughs> you know, if only Renita was able to make a clean break, you know, if only he had gotten the help he needed, if only some of those violent outbursts had been reported in charges press. You know, there were a lot of decisions that were made that ultimately led up to that to that dreadful day and the events of that day. Um, but that was him her hovering over her over her. I remember reporting on that and how afraid she must have been, you know. Um, so I don't know, people don't realize, you know, the mental state that people are driven to. A lot of people already have problems, unresolved problems, unresolved issues. And then you get with someone else that's, that has that in common with you and it feeds off each other. And then you throw in a whole another person into the relationships. I mean, they're, to me, they all share a lot of similar traits. The women did, he did, Renita did, Sharika did. You know. I don't know, I don't know if they had fathers. Uh, and I'm sure whatever problems Sharika had, you know, they originated someplace. Something led up to her being as fragile in that way. Um, you know, so there's a lot of instability, you know, mental, being mentally unstable, uh, mentally unraveling. You know, then you have another woman, Renita, who knows what buttons to push to get you into that state. And according to Jonathan, once she got into that state, she couldn't even care for the kids. So it was posing a problem for the family unit, <clears throat> the whole family unit as a whole. And when you got someone that can just at will, at random, whenever they want, get up on, and then really once the damage is done, it's never undone, really. So, um, and as he stated, his only, and I mean his only solution was that he couldn't come up with anything else. So, we all know how that ended. Uh, three young kids without their mother. And then he got sentenced, uh, plea deal. Uh, and so I don't know how the original woman that he was with. I'm not sure how she, you know, has been able to handle everything. I know she was in touch with him over the phone, you know, because that's who Renita was supposedly apologizing to when she went live. That's what she was apologizing to, this main woman. But and then there was something else I noticed too that maybe if the police hadn't came when they did and it all hadn't went down like it did, maybe she would have survived. But it seems like by his own confession, you know, that's when he shot her was when the police got there. So, 
I just found it interesting that, you know, about his past. So there were a lot of elements at play. There were a lot of things that went into that. It wasn't as cut as, as cut and dry as people come to the channel and bluntly say this or bluntly say that. There's a lot of times there's a lot of wheels in motion that can't be stopped. And ultimately, it it sets off a chain of events. And if there's no intervention in there, you know, it can end very horribly. And in this case, very publicly, because it was done on a public social media platform. But I always found that part of it interesting, you know, his his criminal history. And the fact that he actually had served ten years. And I also thought it was interesting and worth noting that for the past three years he had not been in in, in any trouble. Not to say he wasn't doing anything illegal, but he hadn't got caught up with any of it. 